You're going to tell us lies like you're telling us today? Is that how you're going to fund the war? You don't have money to fund the war or children. But you're going to spend it to blow up innocent people if we can get enough kids to grow old enough for you to send to Iraq to get their heads blown off for the president's amusement. Never been here before. <laughs> to my fellow citizens to be. From 1777 to 1791, before it became the 14th state, Vermont was its own republic. Now, more than two centuries later, there's a push to return to Vermont its original independent status. This government has lost its, um, its moral authority, uh, that the government is owned, operated, and controlled by, by corporate America. The time has come, Naylor says, to take action. U.S.'s biggest problems, peak oil, global warming, terrorism, the economy, and the nation's health care system. It's really a, a radical act of rebellion um, that's driven by, um, by anger and, and fear. The second Vermont Republic. The group is pushing for the secession of Vermont from the U.S. That it's classic David and Goliath. I mean, what could be more absurd than tiny Vermont trying to stand up to the, the greatest economic military empire of all time. I mean, that's really pretty ridiculous. Therein lies the energy, therein lies the, the power. The movement has remained relatively quiet for the past few years, offering an occasional newsletter or speech. But in the past couple of months, something has changed. It started with a survey conducted by the University of Vermont, which found that in one year, the number of people who supported secession rose from 8 to 13 percent. That was followed by local, national, and international media coverage, which is encouraging, Naylor says, but he believes the majority of Vermonters won't be sold on secession until something major happens. It's going to take peak oil, uh, not $3 per gallon uh, for, for uh, gasoline, but 5 $6 and higher, uh, a potential crash of, of the dollar, uh, more effects of global war warming, collapse of the health care. It's these external factors that are going to drive Vermonters to rethink. Todd? Palin seems content to remain in the background. Politically, he has not always been a Republican. According to the Alaska Division of Elections, he was a member of the Alaskan Independence Party until 2002. One of its goals? A vote for Alaska to become a separate and independent nation. One of my fantasies, Bill, is that possibly Vermont uh, secedes from the United States, teams up with New Hampshire, Maine, and the four Atlantic uh, provinces, and we create a little country the size of Denmark and call it New Acadia. New Hampshire and Maine don't want anything to do with you guys. New Hampshire has its own secession movement. They have the Free State Project, uh, plus another one. Right. There's strong sentiments in New Hampshire and in Maine. The big issue, should Vermont secede from the Union? A growing number of people think it should. And those people have published a manifesto explaining why this would be the best option for the very left-leaning state. Could the 14th state to join the union bec become the first one to successfully leave? Some people in Vermont say they've had enough of the United States and they want out of the union. College professor Thomas Naylor says the U.S. is controlled by corporations and cessation is the only answer. Fixing the system becomes a, a, a virtual Im impossibility. We think that the, the United States is unsustainable, uh, it is ungovernable and, and unfixable. And it's an idea that seems to be catching on among Naylor's neighbors. Last fall, 300 people attended a cessation convention in Montpelier. And lots of Vermonters now sport free Vermont bumper stickers. The U.S. government has lost its uh, moral authority. It's, uh, it's corrupt to the core. Revolution is, is radical. Taking over the government is, is radical. But this is not. This, this is a peaceful separation. Fed up in Vermont, 
Real talk about seceding from the Union. They have many concerns. They believe the U.S. is unsustainable, immoral, and ungovernable. And they don't believe a new administration will fix the problem. They have a proposal that's a bit more drastic. They have a perfect right to secede. I'm, I'm Sitting in a circle in Thomas Naylor's Charlotte, Vermont living room, they compared notes on a concept that has captured each of their interests and time, secession. It's very refreshing and encouraging to find that we have uh, uh, compatriots in New England and, and uh, in the West, uh, Hawaii, Alaska. Participants in Tuesday's North-South Secession Summit come from different backgrounds in different states, Vermont, New York, Virginia, but they all believe their country is in trouble. There are really four major problems this country faces. Their peak oil, their climate change, the precipitous decline in the dollar, and President Bush's war on terror. And they believe secession is the fix. Kirkpatrick Sale is the director of the Middlebury Institute, an organization dedicated to studying secession. He says the ultimate dissolution of the American empire, as secessionists call it, is inevitable. All empires have dissolved eventually uh, under certain conditions. And those conditions seem to be the ones that we are uh, in now or, or coming to. The timing of this summit is no coincidence. It was on this day in 1777 that Vermont declared its independence and for 14 years was its own republic, just as Naylor says it should be today. A concept, he says, that's gaining support. Certainly, uh, we have traction. These secessionists know it may take some time to sell others on their idea, an idea some see as extreme and radical. Revolution is, is radical. Taking over the government is, is radical, but this is not. This, this is a peaceful separation uh, of parts. They believe secession will sell itself as a reasonable solution to a frightening and worsening problem. I'm not really proud to be an American for the way that we treat people in other countries. The secession movement has established a presence here. There's a secession newspaper, Vermont Commons, and there are secession bumper stickers and t-shirts, which at this store have been recently selling like hotcakes. I think we got to do it so we're ready when things do collapse. Uh, because I, I believe they will. We'll say no, but the real question is, what, if anything, will they attempt to, to do about it? Ultimately, Naylor can envision the U.S. being divided into 20 different countries, with Vermont joined with New Hampshire, Maine, and a small portion of Canada. And create a little country the size of Denmark that we might call New Acadia. It sounds a bit crazy, he admits, but he believes it will happen. He notes there are separatist movements in more than half of U.S. states. How many times have you heard people say you're nuts? Well, a few times, but, but with less frequency than in the, the past. And for now, that is all the encouragement he needs.